Hey guys, John V here from Phone Arena. Right now you're watching our video review of the Nook HD Plus. It's available right now. You can pick it up for 270 for the base 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi version. They also carry a 32 gigabyte model if you actually need more storage. Now this complements the Nook HD, which is a seven inch tablet. This is more in line to compete in a fuller tablet category. So it's gonna compete against things like the iPad, the uh, Google Nexus 10, and even the Samsung Galaxy Note. It features a nine inch 1080p display, and of course the Barnes and Noble's ecosystem. So we're gonna find out how it fares against the competition out there. I like the 7-inch Nook HD. The HD Plus utilizes some of the same design type characteristics found with the Nook tablet from last year. Now it's most evident with the lanyard spot, but this time it's a little bit, we don't find it too practical on here just because the tablet's a lot larger, so I'm not sure why you'd want to have it tethered to yourself. But maybe you could use it to attach it to something uh, while you're away and not using the tablet. But as far as the overall design, it's decent, nothing really spectacular. Uh, it's pretty much the same uh, build quality found with the Nook HD. Constructed like that plastic all around. The back has a nice soft touch uh, coating to it, which does a great job in repelling dirt, debris, and smudges. So it maintains a very clean appearance, and it is touted as being the lightest in the category at 1.13 pounds. So even with one hand, we don't find it too weighty. And overall, you know, a decent, it has a decent build quality, nothing really uh, awe inspiring with the design, but decent enough to accept. Saying that the HD Plus is competing in the fuller tablet segment, it's sporting a larger display than the uh, Nook HD. It's a 9-inch 1080p IPS LCD display on there with a resolution of 1920 by uh, 1080 pixels. So that's 1080p equates to a pixel density of 256 pixels per inch. And even though it's not as high as the Nexus 10, it's still nice and detailed. Honestly, we didn't have any issues reading out fine text in the web browser. And when it comes to reading, it's very good in the fact that even at the lowest brightness setting, um, uh, it has a nice low contrast. So if you're reading it in the dark, it's not going to strain your eyes. On top of that, it has uh, it's fully laminated with uh, zero air gaps, so it means that it uh, basically maintains its visual clarity at all angles, and it works very well in outdoor conditions with direct sunlight. We didn't have any issues with that. And finally, its color production is a little bit on the warm side. It just gives it that added glow to really uh, capture our eyes. And all in all, it's definitely an attractive thing on the HD+. Being a nook and all, it doesn't surprise us that you have the physical home button below its display. It's the letter N right there, and it's tactile when you press it down. In terms of button placement, you have the dedicated power button that's found on the right edge of the tablet. It's a little bit on the flat side, but at least it's springy. However, the placement of the volume control is a little bit awkward just because it's found on a top edge, so it's not really a place that we normally find it, but nevertheless, it's still springy, yet um, still also flat at the same time. You also have the 3.5mm headset jack and the microphone on top. Along the bottom trim, we spot the LED light here to indicate it's getting a charge. You have the proprietary charging data port right there. And finally, it has a useful micro SD card slot, which is hidden behind this plastic flap. And finally, in the rear, the only thing that we spot is, of course, the distinguishable Nook logo right there. And you have the speaker grill right there. There are no cameras whatsoever with this guy, neither a front or rear facing one. Not surprisingly, the Nook HD Plus is running the same custom UI that's on the Nook HD. It's based on Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. You're not going to notice it just because of the heavy skin on here, but it does offer some of the basic features we'd, we'd find on Android. For example, you have a multitasking pane to switch between the open application. You have also a notifications panel up top. You have quick access to some of the uh, features and functionality of the tablet without going to the settings. And you still have some personalization aspects just because you have uh, five different home screens uh, even though it doesn't offer widgets at all you could still add different shortcuts icons to apps and even change the wallpaper and the best thing about it um, it does offer the uh, multi-user support so you can actually switch between various uh, people so uh, just like what you find with android 4.2 jelly bean you have support for different users with their own settings and uh you know content which is nice still though it's not as in depth compared to stock android Surely it's not the peppiest tablet we've seen out there. It's powered by a dual core 1.5 gigahertz ARM based TI OMAP 4470 processor with one gigabyte of RAM. Now you can tell here we're using a live wallpaper and you could tell how sluggish it becomes when you have it activated. Combined with the high resolution, it does become a little bit taxing with the processor. But if you switch to a, a static wallpaper, it becomes a lot easier to actually maneuver. It exhibits some very uh, responsive rates. And as far as other basic tasks, uh, 
uh, opening up applications, uh, surfing the web, stuff like that. It handles it with enough finesse and doesn't really slow down that much. For a 9-inch tablet, it's a little bit difficult to actually use its landscape keyboard option just because it's more akin to a smartphone keyboard than anything else. Very cramped in terms of the layout itself, but luckily it does exhibit a nice responsive rate. We actually prefer using the uh, the portrait style keyboard just a little bit more, but still there's a little bit of uh, stretching required by your thumbs to actually encompass the entire layout. On one hand, we definitely like the high resolution display when it comes to surfing the web just because you have just a lot of sharpness and clarity with stuff uh, with web pages, but its performance is very erratic. We told you already the uh, CPU is a little bit taxing, especially with the high resolution like this, um, and you could tell already it kind of is lagging and slowing down uh, with some of the basic navigational controls, so it kind of hinders the overall experience. So if you love reading, you definitely will appreciate the Nook HD Plus just because it has a healthy ecosystem when it comes to content uh, relating to books, magazines, newspapers, comic books, and even children's books too. And seeing that it has a nice sharp looking display, it makes it ideal for reading stuff. Um, and of course, as we said, low contrast helps in uh, lower lighting situations. You also have things like uh, article view, which um, optimizes the uh, stuff that you're reading into a column view, making it a lot easier. And with children's books, you have the read and record feature which is pretty useful. Well there's nothing really special about the uh, presentation of the music player. It's pretty much straightforward and conventional by today's standards. What you get is just the usual set of information when you're playing a song, the track listing, the album, uh, the album cover and even the on-screen controls. But we gotta say the uh, audio quality from its speaker is very powerful and strong at the loudest volume setting. Uh, there's no distortion with it but there's just a little bit of sharpness uh, to its output. Luckily, out of the box, the Nook HD Plus offers a wide array of video codec support from H.264, DivX, XVID, and even MPEG-4. Like The one we have here is encoded in DivX 1920x1080 resolution. Of course, with its high-resolution display, it just makes for a great experience. Barely any slowdown or lag, you can tell it's maintaining good playback performance. And of course, those warmer color tones really give it a little bit of a glow. No doubt, there's a healthy selection of content related to books, magazines, newspapers, and even children's books uh, with the Nook, uh, with the Barnes & Noble ecosystem. But when it comes to applications, though, seeing that it isn't a full-blown Android tablet, it's very limited with its offerings. You get some of the popular applications out there, like Netflix, Twitter, uh, and even Flipboard. But as far as uh, some of the others that you'd find on an Android tablet, uh, you're not going to find them here. Battery life on the Nook HD Plus is nothing more than average. We're able to get at least a solid day of normal usage out of full charge. Now, it's worth noting that it doesn't offer an ambient light sensor, so you're going to have to actually control and monitor the brightness setting. Of course, if you have a lower setting, you'll get more juice out of its battery. At $270, there might be some people out there that'll find some value in the Nook HD+, Plus, especially if you love reading books, magazines, newspapers, and all that stuff. Uh, this is definitely an ideal tablet for you just because the strength of its display really makes the experience outstanding in that aspect. But as a whole, when you compare this to some of its rivals, like the, uh, the Google Nexus 10, it's very limited with its features and functionality set. Uh, for $130 more, you're going to get a full tablet offering in the Nexus 10. You have also cameras on board and the wealth of uh, Android applications available to it. The experience is not that bad here. We definitely like how it incorporates some of the core aspects of Android, but again, it's not quite that full-blown experience that we'd like to find. And ultimately, it's just a matter of price point, whether or not you think the $270 price point for this guy is worth it for you. So if you'd like to learn more about the Nook HD Plus guys, you can check out our website, phonearena.com. This is John V. Thanks for watching.